Hello. So today I'm doing something new for my channel. Um, as you've guessed from the title of this video, this is my November reading wrap up. So I have always done my wrap ups on my blog. However, I have decided that I am going to make my blog only for book reviews from now on and everything else is being moved over to my YouTube channel. So this is the first month since I made that decision. So this is my first wrap up on here. So I am very excited and it's a good one because I actually managed to get out of my slump. So in October I only read eight books which is the worst reading month I've had in like two years. My average is between 10 and 13 ish and I read eight in October. So for me that's a really bad slump. For some people that would be an amazing month but for me I wasn't happy with it. I am back baby because in November I read 16 books <sighs> and I am in the middle of another one actually I'm about 70% through the other one but it's a chunker and I am buddy reading it so that isn't gonna happen like it's just not gonna it, it wasn't gonna happen in November so I'm just going to dive right in. I will say I added up the number of pages that I've read. So on my page count, I have included the 549 pages of The Well of Ascension that I've read because that's a massive chunk and I've read that all in November. So my total number of pages for November was 5,547, which is not my best month. But it's a very good month so i was very happy with that there was a few chunky ones and then a few very small ones so i'm just gonna go in the order i think i read them i think this is the order i read them anyway but it doesn't matter they were all read in the, in the month of november so i am just gonna get stuck in so the first book i read in november was the Fellowship of the Ring by J.R.R. Tolkien. So I am taking part in Tolkien Along, which is hosted by Beth at Books Nest, Ashley at Frolic Free Fiction and Lauren at Fiction Tea. And The Fellowship of the Ring was actually the October book, but due to the slump in October, this didn't happen. So I did make it my first book of November. And I did give this three out of five stars. I did not enjoy it as much as I thought I would. I I gave The Hobbit three stars as well when I read that in September. And yeah, I, I definitely think I'm more of a fan of the books. But I am glad I'm finally reading them. But I just... Cue the fireworks and the barking dog in the, bar in the garden. Yay. Um... So I'm just going to talk over the barking. Um, so yeah, I definitely think I'm more of a fan of the films. I don't know what it was about this that I just struggled to get into it. And I did actually read along with the audiobook because I thought that would help. And although the audiobook was really good and the narrator was good, I just, hmm, I'm not sure. Like I genuinely can't tell you my feelings on this because I don't know why I didn't enjoy it that much. But gave it a three star and at least I can say I have now read it. The next book is Percy Jackson and the Battle of the Labyrinth by Rick Royden. So this is book number four and I cannot say too much about it and I cannot say too much about it because obviously it's the fourth book in this series and I know everyone has basically read Percy Jackson but just in case not gonna spoil it but I'm really loving this series. I gave I've given every book in this series so far five out of five. I am gutted I did not read it sooner, but I absolutely adored it. I love the characters in this. Tyson is one of my favourite characters. And yeah, I just absolutely love the characters. And Annabeth. Annabeth's one of my favourites too. But yeah, only one more book and then the Percy Jackson series is complete. 
Next up, we have The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. So if you watch my vlogs, you will know that I am buddy reading these. And this is my very first Sanderson book that I've ever read. And it did not disappoint. It has definitely made me want to read more by Brandon Sanderson. Um, but I absolutely loved this. I, I gave this five out of five stars. I love Vin. I love Kelsia. I love Breeze and Ham and Spook and oh, I just love all the characters in this and Ellen has my heart. I love Ellen and I relate to Ellen at a party and he sat there with a book like I relate. <laughs> so yeah, I am very glad I finally got round to reading this. Um, I'm not going to give you the synopsis for all of these books because I'll be here forever but absolutely love this i love the magic system and what i really loved about this so i at the beginning i was quite confused about the whole metal magic and how it worked with the different metals and there is a chapter where there is a little section in there where it is just pure info dump but the way it's done is so clever so one of the characters is training one of the others and it's basically like you're learning with that character. It's not just a, here's all the information. It's a, you're learning with the character. And I really enjoyed how that was done because I'm not a massive fan of info dumping. But in this sense, I was. So I was very happy with this. Next up, we have Vampires of Moscow by Cadis Knight. So this is actually two authors who have come together to write this series. And this is book one of that series, which is the Bloodweb Chronicles. And I gave this a four out of five star. I was actually um, sent this by the authors and was a part of the blog tour. I will leave my blog tour review link down below in the description so you can go check that out. It is spoilery free. I All of my reviews are spoilery free unless I state otherwise, just, just so you know. But yeah, I was put on the blog tour for this and I absolutely adore this book. I love the main character, I relate, and we love a bit of, like, vampire brothers, like, I mean, mm, who doesn't? <laughs> That's all I'm saying, who doesn't? But I loved this, and I am so excited for book two, which actually comes out on my birthday next year, which is happy birthday to me. Read this and then go read that on the 31st of March. Next up, we have Murder Most Unladylike by Robin Stevens. And I actually gave this one a two and a half star. Um, now, I was very unsure about this. So I bought it because I saw so, so many good reviews. And I was like, oh, that sounds like a really good book. It's a murder mystery set at a girls boarding school. It is set in the 19 somethings. It's quite early on. Um and there's a murder at this school and these two girls have their own little like detective club and one of them finds the body and then they have to basically solve the mystery um and <laughs> the story itself was really good however it made me very very uncomfortable reading how the main character hazel is treated so so the main character, Hazel, is Chinese, I think. I think that's what I said. Yeah, so on the first page, it literally says about Daisy being Sherlock Holmes and Hazel being Watson, which is probably fair. After all, um, whoever heard of a Chinese Sherlock Holmes? And the way Hazel is treated by the others, and I understand that, you know, those times were different but it doesn't have to be written into this book like with no consequences and it wasn't even the fact that the students were the ones bullying Hazel the teachers did it as well the teachers constantly made comments singling her out and it just I really did not like it and it really brought it down for me and I won't be continuing this series which is a shame because it had such potential and I was so confident I was gonna love this Next up we have Moonchild A Voyage of the Lost and Found by Aisha Bushby. This one I gave four out of five stars. This was another middle grade. I absolutely adored this. 
I thought it was so beautifully written and the little stories that we get in between were just amazing and it really brought the story to life and I really enjoyed this. I loved the characters. The ending ripped my heart out. I loved the ending so much, but it but it made me cry. And <laughs> yeah, it was a really good story and I would definitely recommend this. Then we have 13 Treasures by Michelle Harrison. I gave this one again four out of five stars. I love Michelle Harrison's Pinch of Magic series. I absolutely adore the Wittishin sisters and I genuinely did only pick this one up because it's written by Michelle Harrison and I loved Pinch of Magic. She has essentially become an auto by author for me. Um, and I didn't actually know what it was about until I started reading it, but it's about Faye. But Faye of all sense, not Sarah J Mass type fairies, like fairy fairies. And it was just so good. And there was like little twists and oh, I, I really enjoyed this. And one of the characters in particular I did not like at all when he first came into it but he really grew on me and I ended up loving his character by the end and I'm very excited to see where the rest of this series goes because this is actually a trilogy I believe so I will definitely be getting the second book at some point because I am excited to see where it goes for Tanya. Next is The Dawn Chorus by Samantha Shannon so this is just a short novella and this is set between the events of The Song Rising and The Mask Falling. Obviously, The Mask Falling has not come out yet. It comes out at the end of January. This came out earlier this year as a sort of like something to keep everyone going <laughs> before the release of The Mask Falling. So this is technically book 3.5. You cannot read this before the events of The Song Rising because it will spoil everything for you. But it was set in two different timelines. So it was set in the current timeline of Just After Song Rising. And also there were like flashback moments to during the events of The Bone Season, which is book one. And I absolutely loved this. I thought it dealt with trauma really well. Obviously, I cannot speak for the actual actual representation because I've not been through the type of trauma that the main characters go through um, but it wasn't it wasn't just like oh we've talked about it I'm cured it's a this is going to be a process like this is going to take time to come to terms with what's happened and I really liked that it wasn't rushed it was so beautiful and so heartbreaking and I loved it and I cannot wait for book four Next up we have Coraline by Neil Gaiman. So I actually listened to the audiobook for this and I have seen the film before a couple of times. The most recent time being in October and I love the film. It's so creepy and I was really excited about the audiobook because it's actually narrated by Dawn French and everyone loves Dawn French. And I did really enjoy the book, but not as much as the film. I think it's because the film, it's there in front of you and it's a bit creepier. But I did still give this four out of five stars. So, you know, I did really enjoy it. Um, but there was actually a character that is not in the book, but is in the film, which I spent the whole book thinking, where is this character? No, nope, not in the book. Oh, well. <laughs> Next up, we have Pockin and Stubbs by Sophie Green. Oh, I have seen everyone raving about this and it sounds so good. It's ghosts. It has ghosts. I'm not going to go into detail on the ghosts, but it has ghosts. And it's like detective mystery and oh, it's just so good. And there are a couple of bits that really creep me out, like... They were like, hmm. <laughs> but I loved it. It was so good. And again, another series I am going to be continuing and I'm looking forward to continuing. Um, but I did give this, I can't, did I say, I gave this four out of five stars as well. Next is another book that is talked about so much in a positive light on, so, on the book community. And that is Frost Heart by Jamie Littler. I 
have had this book for a while. I got it when it first came out, so I got the Edges one. <laughs> And I have just bought book two, which I'll be reading next month. But I absolutely loved this. It was, oh, it made me cry. It also made me nearly throw my book, which I do not do, but I nearly did. Because there was this one part and I was like, no, I need to, I need to stop. Cause, and I was like almost crying and it was just so good. And it is not often this happens, but five stars. I don't often give middle grades five stars. This got five stars. This is amazing. And my favourite character by far is Tobu. Oh, my heart. I love Tobu so much. He's so cute. <laughs> Next up, back to Tolkien along for the November book, which I actually read in November. And that is The Two Towers. So again, I gave this three stars. However... I want to talk about this because this is I'm actually disappointed in this. I was nearly about to give it four stars. The first half of this book is incredible. You follow Merry and Pippin and Gandalf and Aragorn and all of those. And it was like action and things happening and so good. And I was like, yes, yes, I'm getting into this series. Like this is going to be a four star and then the second half where it follows Frodo, Sam and Gollum was so boring. <laughs> like, it's been a while since I watched the films, but if I remember rightly, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, I this is just how I think I remember it. In the film, it goes back and forth between the two groups. So Frodo, Sam and Gollum's journey is like broken up with bits of the action from the other characters in between this isn't it's literally this half good this half boring like that that that's that's it so yeah i was a bit disappointed in this but only one more book to go and then it's done the next one is a childhood favorite for me and that is the witches by Roald Dahl now this <laughs> this book I ended I gave this three out of five stars I do not remember I remember it being scarier than it was and, and I know 27 I'm not a kid anymore however the film when I was a kid the film traumatized me yet I would still watch it over and over again if I was to watch the film now pretty sure it would still traumatize me the original not this new one that they've just brought out which i'm not bothering with because no nothing can traumatize me as much as the original however the book doesn't the book was like obviously it was creepy but it was just like yeah okay but but you know like that was it and that's why i've only given it three stars however there was the nostalgia there was obviously it's kind of exact to the film so you know you can't go wrong with this and it's a classic for like kid my like someone my age from when they was a kid i used to love i used to read nothing but like Roald Dahl and Enid Blyton and everything so yeah and talking of Enid Blyton another childhood favorite that I reread was The Enchanted Wood and I love this I uh, this again I only gave it three stars but I think the reason the only reason I would give it a higher rating would be for the nostalgia. So I, I don't want to up the rating just for nostalgia. Obviously, it is a kid's book and I do love it. And I will definitely reread this series over and over again. And I do want to actually, I do have all four books in this series because my sister got them for me for Christmas last year, which still want to know what happened to the original books I had when I was a kid. No clue what happened to them. But... This is such a cute story. It's of three siblings and they discover the enchanted wood and the magic faraway tree at, which can take you to all different places and they go on adventures and they make friends and it's just so magical and I love this series and yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's all I can say about it.
Next up we have Nevermore by Jessica Townsend. So this is the first book in the Nevermore series which is The Trials of Morrigan Crow and I don't think I've ever seen a bad review about this book and I mean they're probably out there but I've never seen them and after reading this I can see why it's such a good book. I absolutely adore the characters in this so much. I love Morrigan. I hate Morrigan's family. Like they can just, you know, leave right now. But I love the world that is created and I'm very excited to learn more about Wonder Smiths in the second book because they're not touched on as much in this book. But yeah, I'm very excited to continue the series now that I've finally started it, which a lot of my friends are very glad of because because I've been saying for a while, oh yeah, I've I've got Nevermore on Audible. I'm gonna I'm gonna read it. I mean, really, it's their own fault. They should know by now that that's not gonna happen. But anyway, yes, four out of five stars. Loved it. Cannot wait to continue the series. And then the final book that I read in its entirety in November is Jungle Drop by Abby Elphinstone. So this is the sequel to Rumble Star, which I read earlier this year and loved. I just love Abby Elphinstone's writing. I loved Sky Song, which is completely separate to this series. I loved Rumble Star and I adored Jungle Drop. So the twins in this, Fox and Fibba, are... The character development of these two characters is incredible. I loved watching them grow and learn how badly their parents brought them up. And the ending was just so wholesome and lovely. And it had me choking up at quite a few po points of this book because it's just so lovely and... I absolutely adored it. I gave it four out of five stars, which I'm pretty sure I gave, that's what I gave Rumble Star. And I'm, I love the world of the Unmapped Chronicles. So Rumble Star is one of them. Then there's Jungle Drop. And I'm excited to learn more about the different places. I believe this is a whole series. I don't know how many books it will be, but I'm excited to see where we go in the next book because we've already been to Rumble Star and we've already been to Jungle Drop and I really like how the two books connected. I'm not gonna say any more than that, but I liked how the two books connected and it was very lovely. <laughs> and then as I think I mentioned before, the book that I have read most of, but not all of, is The Well of Ascension by Brandon Sanderson, which is the second book in the Mistborn series, obviously, Final Empire is the first book in that series, but we didn't get to finish that, so that's being rolled over and I'll tell you my thoughts on that next month. But of these 16 books, 10 of them were for Believeathon, which is hosted by Gavin at How to Train Your Gavin. And I'm so glad I took part in Believeathon this year. I have missed all the others because I didn't discover Gavin's channel until earlier this year. Um, there was actually 13 prompts for Believeathon, but I did not manage to get to the other three. But yeah, so I think that was a pretty good month. If you take out Murder Most Unladylike, they were all three to five stars. So, you know, I'm pretty happy with that. It's a pretty solid, you know, it's a pretty solid month, especially after a massively slumpy month as well. But that is everything. If you've read any of these books, let me know down below in the comments what you thought of them. And I will see you next time. Bye.